Don't forget to subscribe TechQuest Vlogger and also tap the bell icon to never miss a video from us. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to install and configure Citrix Zen Server 7.2. We will also talk a bit about Zen Center in this video. Once again, friends, my name is Nitin Lal and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel TechQuest Vlogger. If you are new to my YouTube channel, then consider subscribing. Alright, let's begin. For demonstration purpose, I am going to install Zen Server 7.2 on VMware Workstation. But before that, let's go ahead and download it. Let's go to the download link. You can also refer the description box to get the download link. So we are going to download Zen Server 7.2 Standard Edition. So here you can download Zen Center as well, Zen Server 7.2 base installation ISO as well. So I need Zen Server 7.2 based installation ISO. So this download is going to take a bit of time, so I'm going to pause this video for now. And we are back. As you can see that my download has been finished. So let's quickly go ahead and perform the installation of Zen Server. To do that, let's create a new virtual machine here. Uh, let's go ahead and give the location of the ISO. So I'm going to select Zen Server 7.2 install CD open it up click next I recommend to select VMware ESX here and select the version as uh, VMware ESX 6 because you don't have an option whereas you can select uh, uh, the operating systems likewise you can do when you create any machine for uh, Windows Linux but there is no option available for Citrix Zen server here so that's why I recommend to select VMware ESX here and uh, select the version as VMware ESX i6. Hit next. I'm going to give it a name as Zen Server for now. Click next again. Uh, I don't want to split my uh, virtual disk. I want to use it as a single file. So uh, I'm going to check that box. Uh, I want to use this uh, Zen server as a hypervisor as well when I'm going to set up my Zen desktop in this environment. So that's why I'm going to give the disk size as, uh, let's give it 500 GB because I'm going to provision some uh, machines from PVS as well by using this hypervisor. So that's why I'm going to select 500 GB, hit next. and. If you want to customize uh, anything here you can do that memory is 4 GB that is fine for now I will increase it later on as soon as I introduce few more machine in this hypervisor uh, processor 2 is pretty much okay I already given the location of my so I'm gonna set it as a uh, net NAT for now uh, maybe later on I will set up my own uh, networks here so I'm gonna change it later on but for now uh, uh, I'm gonna set it as NAT uh, rest is ab absolutely fine so we can just simply go ahead and finish and power on the virtual machine so simply go ahead and hit enter here to start the installation so I'm gonna leave it as US click OK click OK again accept the end user license agreement uh, you can read it if you like I have already uh, done that so I'm gonna accept it straight away I'm gonna use it as thin provisioning here so I'm gonna enable this thin provisioning option here and then click OK so I'm not using uh, anything else I'm just using the local media so that is fine I'm gonna click OK again here so if you want to verify it uh, you can vi verify the installation media as well let's do that if you want to skip it you can skip it as well I know my media is fine so let's do the verification uh, just for the demonstration purpose so as you can see that is verifying the installation source at this moment And we got the message where it is stated that verification of your installation Zen server completed successfully. No problem were found. So let's click OK here. I'm going to give the password here. Click 
OK again. I do have a DSCP in my environment, but I would like to set up a static IP address here. So uh, I'm going to give it an IP as, oops, sorry. One nine two dot one six eight dot two dot nine. My subnet mask is gonna be two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. I don't wanna give any default gateway for now, so I'm pretty much okay with it. Uh, I'm gonna give the name host name as uh, Zen Server only. Uh, I do have a DNS as well in my environment, so let's give the DNS IP as well. So it's 192.168.2.2 and then hit OK. So I'm going to set the geographical area as uh, Asia and select Kolkata from here and click OK. I don't have any NTP, so I'm going to insert that manually later on uh, let's go ahead and install Zen server here so the entire installation will take a bit of time so I'm gonna pause this video for now as soon as this installation is complete I'll be back and we are back as you can see that my installation has been completed and it asking me to include any supplement packs I don't want to do that right now so I'm gonna click no for this So it's just running the final wizard right now and uh, it's gonna finish in a minute or two. Now simply go ahead and uh, supply the date and time because I don't have any uh, NTP setup on my environment so I'm gonna insert it manually. So whatever it is reflecting at this moment I'm gonna stick with that for now and click OK to complete the installation. And we are done. As you can see that the installation has been completed. So I'm going to just go ahead and reboot this machine. So simply click OK. That's fine. And we are done here. As you can see that my Zen Server 7.2 has been installed successfully. From this screen, you can simply go ahead and do some sort of basic management like uh, changing the password of your Zen Server. You can also manage the IP addresses from here. You can uh, run some commands as well by using this console and manage your Zen Server uh, like that. But in order to create a machines, uh, you need to install Zen Center as well. So Let's quickly jump over to one of my server where we can simply go ahead and install Zen Center to manage all our machines. So to do that, let's simply go ahead and uh, browse our Zen server with the IP here. So in my case, it's 192.168.2.9. So as soon as you open it, you have two options. I need to install Zen server here. So I simply go ahead and select the second option. I don't want to save it. So I'll simply go ahead and run the installer. Now as you can see that my installation has been started so I just simply go ahead and hit next here. So I want to use this machine as a Zen desktop of mine. Uh, I'm going to promote this machine as a delivery controller later on. So uh, I will use another account as well uh, to log in onto this machine. So that's why I want to use the option as uh, install for all users. So it should be available for other users as well to manage uh, a machine via Zen Center. So just simply hit next and install. This installation is pretty straightforward. It's not uh, very much complex. So this thing gonna take a bit of time. So I'm gonna pause this video for a while. Uh, I will be back as soon as this installation is finished. Welcome back friends. As you can see that my installation has been done. So just simply go ahead and hit finish here. And uh, let's open Zen Center and just have a look how the Zen Center actually looks like. So I don't want to uh, update it for now. I will do it manually rather than updating it over the internet. Now let's quickly uh, connect to our Zen server from here. 
So in my case, my Zen server IP is 192.168.2.9. Uh, I'm going to log in with the root account for now and hit add. So as you can see that I have simply browsed my uh, Zen server. Uh, and from here, I can simply go ahead and uh, create a virtual machines. I can simply go ahead and uh, promote servers, whatever I want, I can do that as well. I can create my own networks as well if I like. Uh, so there are a lot of things actually which I can do uh, while using this hypervisor with my Zen desktop. So let's say for instance, if I would like to create any uh, new VM, I can simply go ahead and uh, select new VM, select the operating system from here, uh, whatever operating system I'm having, I can simply uh, go ahead and select it, hit next, give it a name. It's as similar as uh, a virtual machine which you normally create by using VMware Workstation or uh, when you're creating machine with the ESX as well. So that's all I have for now. Thanks for joining me for this course. I will see you in the very next tutorial of mine. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then consider subscribing. Until then, I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.